You are not immortal. I am not immortal. But we, we are immortal. What do you mean by that? I think about death a lot, probably an unhealthy amount. It's hard not to, but sometimes it can be easy not to, especially if you're not being reminded of it regularly. I'm not sure if life is a gift or a curse, a test or a lesson, but I do know that eventually we will all die one day, whether we want to or not. Over the years, I've learned many things, and I've begun to notice weird facts about our reality that subtly suggest that we might actually be immortal. Now, I know my statement can easily be dismissed if you consider the fact that people are constantly dying every day. So what I'm about to tell you won't change that fact, and I'm not here to convince you of anything. Hell, I don't even know if I believe in myself, but um, here are just some things that I've noticed and that I should share with you. There's a mythical bird called the phoenix. The phoenix symbolizes immortality, resurrection, and life after death. Its very existence is a closed loop, a cycle of life, death by its own fire, and born again from its ashes over and over, perpetually living even though it's always dying. Now hold on to that thought about the phoenix. Did you know that there is always at least six people alive that look just like you? And millions of people that have the same interest as you, and many who have almost the same experiences as you. This is not to point out that you are not unique, but that we are connected. Regardless of your beliefs or knowledge of human history, most of you would agree that every human is related to one another. If you analyze the bigger and smaller picture of our collective reality, you'll start to see similarities across these three scales of existence. Outer space and everything in it, our space, so everything we can see with the naked eye, and the atom realm, and all the things you can see only using a microscope of some kind. There are many patterns and similarities in these three scales of existence that simply cannot be ignored which is that everything will or can die, fall apart, or become unstable. But as inevitable as it may be, it is also inevitable that everything will live, be put back together, or become stable once again. Yes, it won't be the same as it was, but it's still alive nonetheless. Sure, some might say that I'm describing reincarnation, but I don't think that's the right word for what I'm talking about. Stars, for example, live a long life and eventually die or change into something else. There are some stars that will explode in the form of a supernova and scatter matter that will gather with gravity and this matter will eventually create new stars. Basically, this type of dying star gives birth to new stars. The law of conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. The definition of matter in classical physics and general chemistry is that matter is any substance that has mass and takes up space by having volume. The definition of immortal is living forever, never dying or decaying, which would lead anyone to think that matter is immortal. Now you can probably see where I'm going with this, but technically matter is not alive. But it is the only true thing that can create life on its own, and itself cannot be created nor destroyed. And we don't know where it came from. Sure, we have some ideas like the Big Bang Theory, but honestly, we don't know. And most likely, we will never know. But what we do know about matter is that it is literally made up of everything. Everything that you can see, touch, taste, smell, or sense in general is made of matter. Even you are made up of matter. And it is the closest thing to a god that we will ever know, see, and somewhat understand in our lifetime. But funny enough, energy cannot be created nor destroyed as well, which would be another scientific and realistic god that exists in our reality. So matter and energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Our thoughts are made up of energy, and our bodies are made up of matter. Our bodies are also powered by energy that we convert from food, water, sunlight, and whatnot. And as you know, stars are made up of the same thing Things as we are, which is why a popular saying that astronomers like to say, which is that we are made of star stuff. When they say stuff, they are referring to specific elements. Elements are the smallest units of matter. But anyway, stars can give birth to more stars and we are made of the same things as stars, and we can also give birth to more humans. And some cells and other things that you can see under a microscope can duplicate themselves so that they can live longer. And all of these things are made up of matter and energy, the same two things that cannot be created nor destroyed. Now remember the phoenix, how it's a cycle of life, death by its own fire, and is born again from its ashes over and over? It seems to me that all of existence is just one big phoenix, and because of that, we are immortal.